Corrections to the minutes of the last regular meeting. None being, um, they'll stand as approved. The next item is it time for public comment. Um, this is time for anyone if they'd like to um, um, say something to the group here. They are welcome to do so. And if you'll state your name when you come up to the podium. Here, here, here. Right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, being none, the next, we'll move on to item six. Mm, nothing on item six. Item 7A, uh, item 7A will be continued at the next meeting. Uh, the employee being recognized uh, uh, had to be uh, unexpectedly <coughs> uh, uh, awkward today. Uh, 7B, uh, we've uh, had a discussion uh, Earlier this fall with American Legion representatives, I've asked City Attorney Grissel and uh, City staff to update you regarding that discussion. Um, I know there were a lot of questions earlier in the year about um, uh, the things that have been agreed to at the time of the property transaction. So, Randy? Yeah, we, city staff met with uh, members of the American Legion officers uh, a few months ago, a couple maybe, and and uh, we explained our, our expectations as far as completion of the parking lot at some point. Uh, the American Legion members were very cooperative and, and willing to listen to us. Uh, it was my understanding that they were going to bring maybe a partial plan to the city to, to look at and see if that's a way that they would, could progress. And I think they've been in contact with Caleb, and so I'll ask Caleb to let you know what he knows about it. And certainly there are some members here if they wish to address the governing body as well. And uh, they have come in and, and <coughs> met with us, and um, they, based on their limited funding, uh, they're going to do a certain amount of the concrete. They're going to be doing it in concrete, the parking lot, and they'll be doing a certain number of spaces as they get the funding to do so. And currently, they've been approved to do, um, to do uh, I believe, three or four spaces currently in concrete, and then they'll be to add once they get to the third phase of that uh, is when we are going to relook at it with them uh, because there are some drainage issues that we may may not uh, be able to know about until we get a little bit further on it and they may need to uh, hire someone to take a look at that to how the drainage will need to be handled and those type of things if they go much further than three phases in that by just letting them do small pieces at a time. And so that's where we're at on that. They've been, um, uh, they've come in and got their permit for that and they've started the work on that, so. Three, three phases of about three or four? <coughs> parking spots each, yes. yes. That, uh, that doesn't include an approach then anytime soon? Right. Entry way or? Not yet, mm -hmm. no. That site's pretty elevated mm -hmm. from the curb, right? I mean, I don't think drainage will be a problem. Well, the, the problem is the drainage onto the city system. It, it oh. speeds up the amount of water and how yeah. fast it gets there and those type of things is what we want to take a good look at before. That's why currently they're doing the, the concrete along the building on the mm -hmm. high side and then it drains into the gravel area and then it goes out, out to the, the system. So. Okay, and I know we have representatives here from the region. Do you all have anything you'd like to add? I do. Come on up. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jim Arwine on the accident, and uh, actually we have money, we have funding now uh, dedicated to at least, uh, well, we have two 10 to 12 slabs in place. Uh, we're gonna add two of those, and we have money for five or six more slabs. So it's just a matter of getting uh, some help getting a form set up. We've already started digging the ground, and it's pretty hard. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll continue to move on. And certainly at any point that you would like to know about it, just give us a call, and we'll come down and brief you again. Okay. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. All 
Right. We have provided a uh, sales tax report and uh, the monthly police department activity report as well as an update of the uh, capital projects currently underway. Are there any questions over either of those three reports? Hearing none, um, I will, uh, in my report, uh, give you a couple of updates. One, uh, yesterday the county commission took up uh, the topic from our, I believe, March joint meeting that uh, the, uh, our two groups had talked about, Jenny Barker Road, and uh, the article yesterday, uh, or maybe it was in today's Today. paper, Today. uh, mentioned that. Um, and, and we can expect them to come over and, and, and visit with us in detail about that soon. Uh, the mayor and I did meet with the county chair and the county administrator last week, just uh, asking them in the context of, hey, we've got a capital improvement process coming up. We've got this project sitting out there. Uh, how do we plug this in and how do we act on kicking the can down the road from the, from the March joint meeting when it appeared that the consensus of the group was that maybe the county was interested in the city taking on this project and then contributing funding, all of which was the article did a good job of uh, um, covering. The, and uh, yeah, I think it was a, their understanding and we agreed that this was a county project that, needed to, you know, that discussion needed to start or generate officially over, over on their end. Uh, and that was absolutely appropriate, and so we'll we'll see where that leads. In the meantime, I believe for a CIP process, for the purposes of the CIP process, which is planning, it's not necessarily budgeting; it's planning. We'll probably go ahead and plug in a project and just put a plug city number and a plug count county number in, and if that adjusts sometime over the next year or so, then that adjusts. But uh, we appreciate the county taking up the issue and, and moving forward on that uh, on that item from the joint meeting, which uh, up until now we hadn't really done anything with. So that's good news. Um, also, just to let the um, commission know, and this was covered in our pre-meeting with the Recreation Commission, uh, there's some minor improvements underway at Fansler Field, and so if folks see some activity down there, we just want them to know that Fansler, which for all intents and purposes was unused during 2015, is uh, having its fence pushed back just a little bit and uh, uh, the infield and outfield having some, some uh, uh, reestablishment of the infield and outfield grounds uh, to accommodate baseball in the spring. And if that works and we get turf up, uh, uh, where we need it and, and, and everything sort of behaves clay-wise and, and, and installing the fences and all that. But that should be the location of uh, the high school's junior varsity baseball, which right now is playing over baseball academy. And so having those two teams separated and their coaches by distance from one another uh, is something the school district was interested in, in, in changing. Um, you know, I think between the city and the, the recreation commission, Finding a way to use Fansler Field instead of having it just sit there and not be used uh, was good. So there, there are some costs attributed to that. Uh, we're not exactly sure the extent of it. It's far more minimal than constructing or reconstructing a baseball field. Uh, the school district's pledged a, a little bit of money, and the, the city will make up make up the difference. And then we're all sort of contributing soft cost staff time and, and that type of thing to the project. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, also, uh, from our joint meetings, either with the Housing Authority or the Recreation Commission, which I hope you found uh, valuable uh, at learning about our component units, if there's any follow-up questions to those that we can address either in uh, additional pre-meeting workshops or perhaps in City Commission items or research projects or anything uh, along those lines, uh, you know, Please let me know about those. Uh, I, I know we only had about 45 minutes of presentation time with each of them, uh, and that's a, not very much time to cover a whole lot of topics. For those questions that were asked during the meeting, uh, we will try to update update you on those. Um, 
I think Mike will be in a position maybe in the next couple weeks to update you on uh, maybe some of the more tangible things we may be looking at to help the uh, housing authority out. Uh, I know we referenced that we might be able to do it kind of when we get a list of some of the things we may be able to do to help, we'll come directly to you. All right. Uh, so with that, 7D, meetings of note. Um, if there's anything on there that uh, you would like to attend, please RSVP through CLIN. Are we going to be in the parade? Yes. Would you like to be in the parade? Yes. Yes. Oh, we yeah. Okay. I think we're ready for item 8A, the appropriation ordinance. If approved, it would be number 2399-2015A. Make a motion to approve appropriation ordinance 2399-2015A. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. The governing body is asked to consider and approve uh, an annexation request from Chapel Heights LLC and an extension or and an annexation ordinance for property located south of K-156 and Mary Street, east of Jenny Barker Road. Uh, if approved, this ordinance number, we don't know yet, no. we'll have that for you in a second. Uh, I will go ahead and... Is it, now is this just, didn't we approve part of this? Or yes, earlier. Okay. And I'll turn this over to staff to kind of identify the parcels of property and how this relates to what's already city limits and, and what's not. Here you go. Hey, there it is. Oh, hi. <laughs> <coughs> okay, uh, earlier this year, uh, City Commission annexed Chapel Heights Unit 2, which is uh, this area here, um, at the request of Chapel Heights LLC. Last month, we annexed uh, about 150 acres of the Oak Break property, uh, just to the north west of where we're at here. Um, this brings uh, all of the chapel property into the city limits. Uh, we have an excluded tract of about two acres that uh, didn't have an annexation agreement and couldn't quite get things worked with that owner. So for the time being, that'll remain uh, out. The Marriott uh, Hotel sits in here. That's in the city limits. Uh, Walmart and what was going to be uh, Furniture Row back about 10 years ago. Uh, we annexed that piece and came across. 156 and then we hit the 156 commercial area. Uh, this is Merle and Polly Witt's uh, property in here. So, so we were at an island annexation with the Marriott and then an island with the two Chapel Heights flats. So this now eliminates uh, those islands, uh, brings it all in, into the city limits. This port also we're annexing a stretch of K-156 from uh, approximately the southerly line of the Marriott out to uh, what would be the original Mary Street when it ran straight east and west. <clears throat> a little bit of Jenny Barker Road adjacent to the Marriott properties and a little bit of Mary Street until we get through the curve uh, and straighten out to go east. Statute allows the city to annex right of way uh, if we're adjacent to it. So, at some point in time, if we may uh, work the deal with the county on Jenny Barker construction and funding, so that could be an annexation separate. Um, this parcel down here is a financial property that we annexed a couple of years ago, so we're, we're close, not touching simply because of. Jane Parker Road right away here. So we've got the Wharf property behind Home Depot and then a few properties on Mary Street itself that uh, 
are still outside of the city. So, uh, but this uh, was requested by the chapels, and uh, uh, we recommend your approval. If approved, it would be ordinance number 2712-2015. Motion to approve ordinance 2712-2015. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. <coughs> motion carried. Item B, which if approved would be ordinance number 2713-2015. It's an ordinance approving the rezoning of land from Ag District to C2 General Commercial District the zone of ordinances on the <coughs> district zoning maps of the city and repealing the current zoning ordinance and district zoning map all of the code of ordinances of the city of garden city this address is uh, 2660 jenny barker road it's the property uh, that was added to um, the city limits by uh, no rates Find the there we go. And you have, you have the full staff report in your packet. This did go before the planning commission and it was recommended by staff and the planning commission uh, with all seven planning commissioners present to recommend approval of this rezoning request uh, from the agriculture to C2. To be the future home of the uh, uh, Russell Child Development Center. How big is that? It's uh, approximately three point, uh, just over three point three point one two acres. Three point one two. I make a motion to approve Ordinance twenty seven thirteen dash twenty fifteen. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Can we? Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion carried. Item 10A, the governing body is asked <laughs> to consider and approve an advisory board recommendation uh, regarding transportation alternatives, which is the new KDOT program, the na new name of KDOT's uh, transportation enhancement program. And these are projects that provide uh, something other to the transportation system than just uh, handling vehicles. So I'll turn it over to Steve for your consideration of this item. Okay, uh, we brought this to you in, uh, in September uh, when KDOT announced the application process and uh, you uh, requested that we seek advisory committee uh, recommendations for uh, this program. Uh, Parks and Tree Board had discussed a project for some streetscape improvements on the west side of Taylor Avenue from the drainage ditch up towards Mary Street, uh, but they didn't have a quorum present, so we don't have an official recommendation from them. The Community Health Advisory Board does uh, recommend a, an off-road pathway uh, between 3rd Street and Campus Drive uh, on the north side of the Stone Edition, Big Sky, and uh, the Northeast Territories area. Uh, <coughs> got the map broken down into, into west half and east half. Uh, Bernardine Sits Intermediate Center uh, is here. This is the Word of Life Church. Uh, the Stone Edition drainage ditch runs along here and then turns north. We have an alley all the way from 3rd Street to uh, Lost River Road. That, uh, for the most part, we could incorporate uh, utilizing the alley right away, the ditch right away as much as possible for a 10-foot pathway through here. Uh, once we get to Lost River Road, then uh, we don't have an alley, so this would be an area we would need to acquire easements from uh, the two churches as well as uh, the Kaplinger uh, group. Uh, the, 
the comprehensive plan has a dashed line in the, the trails master plan approximately halfway between here and the bypass so somewhere in that half mile stretch they were recommending a, a pathway uh, this simply just kind of gives you an alternative uh, of a fixed location should you agree with the recommendation so is there room enough for the alley and a 10-foot walkway before it gets to the ditch uh, I haven't, haven't completely looked at all of the, the logistics behind it but uh, we do have portions of the tally trail where the, the trail itself is in the actual alley and it is dual function it serves as alley for alley traffic as well as the foot track and pedestrians and bicycles so if we had to do that we've certainly got the room with the 20-foot alley and then I believe that's uh, a 40 to 60 foot wide ditch easement so I think we can uh, probably get it through there I just haven't looked at all of the ins and outs at this stage of the game there's also poles along on the north right. side of the alley are those going to need to be relocated no we would work around all of, all of the utilities so mm -hmm. it's like a, you know, if we can fit everything on the north side of the poles basically between the poles and the ditch through there that's where we go uh, once we get, uh, say, to this, where the ditch turns goes north, and uh, we could either look at putting the pathway entirely in an easement north of the pole line, or, as I said, uh, a combined alley pathway uh, usage. Would this be uh, asphalt? Yes. Like, just like tallied and lighted? Uh, yeah, if, with, with the, the pole line being essentially through there, we, we could probably get, uh, get get the pathway lighting down low enough to, on those poles to be able to light it fairly well. If, if, if we do that up there, that, that, that alley and, and, and pave it, are we going to have straight through traffic going through there? Well, that's... Uh, that's definitely a concern, and uh, if, if the pathway is, is above uh, or outside of the alley as much as we can, we can control it with bollards and fence or some other minor improvement to keep vehicular traffic out. But certainly if we end up having uh, the pathway down the alley, uh, which has been a problem with people shortcutting between Bernadine Sitz and the Florence Street. Wilson area and everywhere else through there. That if we have to do that, we'll have to look at uh, maybe a little more aggressive uh, vehicular control measures. Now, once it's improved, it'll get more use versus yeah. a rough alley. Uh, and, and it could be something uh, like we you, you discussed here a week or two ago, <coughs> so there's one alley out by in, in the Cloverleaf Junction area where you might have to actually put bollards up to close the alley to traffic for a short stretch to make it inconvenient for uh, short-cutting traffic. Yeah, well, I certainly see the need of the walkway up on that area continuing. That could be a good source for the schools and other things. I think it would, it would help with children walking to the schools too, a yeah. safe place for them to go. Definitely. But in that, we also would need to make sure, try and keep vehicles off yeah. of that and leave the alley for local traffic yeah. and, and, and I, you know, I, I think uh, as we get more involved in the, the actual design of this should it uh, get funded or should you <coughs> agree to apply and, and we do get funding then we would look at uh, you know, acquiring the easements and, and get it as much of it as possible outside of the alley to where we can control mm -hmm. uh, vehicular traffic and access to it you mean in a split rail fence, maybe like on well, some Exactly, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. that or um, something that just mm -hmm. to, to make sure mm -hmm. that people knew they weren't supposed to be driving on the nice shiny black surface. <laughs> do, we kind of, do we have an idea of what the cost is going to be? This? Uh, I, I'm, unfortunately, um, I, ha I haven't had a chance to run that. Um, okay. 
How far is it? How it's it's a mile long. Mile long. Yeah. Ten foot wide. Um, <clears throat> I'm just ballparking, I'd say somewhere four or five hundred thousand dollars, but 80 20. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, if we're successful, then it's something that would be budgeted probably for the 2017. Uh, One thing that we sold that lot that was supposed to be a pocket park there at Mary and Fleming. I think we sold that for what, 50000 or so, 70, I think it was 70. <coughs> by the fire station. Be, yeah, by the fire station. Oh. So, some of that money could be, because those pocket parks take a lot of maintenance and mm -hmm. we don't really want that. So. Yeah. I okay. make a motion yeah. to approve the application as recommended by the Health Community Health Coalition or Community Health Advisory Board. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Item 11A. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Board appointments. Um, first, the Planning Commission. The unexpired term of uh, Tanner Lucas is needing filled. Two people have expressed interest. Scott Stewart and Adriana Bolau. My apologies to Adriana. Their applications are included. And, uh, I make a motion we approve Scott Stewart for the Planning Commission appointment. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. There's two. Uh, are the governing bodies being asked to appoint two members to fill vacant seats on the Cultural Relations Board? <coughs> I make a motion we approve the. Cultural Relations Board recommendations for the two appointments to the Cultural Relations Board. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor <laughs> say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Well, with that, I think we're ready for the consent agenda. Consent agenda, which if approved would be items 11B1 through 6, three piece. Excuse me, I think in our discussion yesterday we wanted to pull item 2 off of the consent agenda. Okay. The approval of the 20th water main. Oh, that's right. Okay, thank All right, so if you would uh, note on your agenda that we're removing item 2, not for consideration today. So. If you approve the consent agenda, it would be item 11B1 and 11 item B3 through 6 triple P. Make a motion. We approve the consent agenda 11B1 and B3 through 6 triple P. Second. Make a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. Mr. Cessna, you're first. Uh, <clears throat> good information this morning during our pre meeting uh, on our commission. Uh, uh, like uh, Matt said, you know, a lot of a lot of information in 45 minutes, a lot of <coughs> questions, but it was it was good information uh, on the rec. Uh, I noticed that the uh, we were talking uh, trails earlier in, in the meeting and approving that. I noticed the county is talking, um, applying for some grants for trails out in the county and maybe trying to connect with the city. And that might be a future item discussion item. Maybe talking with them about with that. You know, if we have another uh, county city commission uh, joint meeting. 
maybe bringing our master plan and seeing how that all lines up with kind of maybe their thoughts and stuff. So, and that's all I've got. Mr. Dale. Yes, the pre-meeting was very informative this morning. I had for a long time had some questions about a lot of things and I did receive a lot of answers and and it just uh, it was good because there was nowhere else to get that information that, that we could go to and look at it and just comprehend it. So it was good that they came in and explained a lot of things to us. Thank you. Mr. Lodge? Um, with on the trails and sidewalks and everything, but I think you know, I hope they stay on the uh, North Taylor um, that, you know, that would help that entryway and we've had, you know, some issues with maintenance right along the edges anyway and, and uh, you know, when, when we can do something to help that situation out along there, then that would, uh, that would be a good thing. So hopefully that will stay yeah. front and burner. We'll make sure that, uh, if it's not in the CIP yet, we'll, we'll get that included so that it and with you know, development out there, it's just, you know, it's a ripe spot to, mm -hmm. to uh, look for our, some opportunities when they're there to, to start that process. It can't all be done at once, but, you know, start moving along there. So, it, you know, it already looks pretty nice coming in there, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for being somewhat industrial, it's not too bad. And, and mm -hmm. of course, the Walmart neighborhood market has really dressed it up, so it kind of set the bar out there. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, where, where the city had already done sidewalks and grass, you know, to a certain degree, you know, it, uh, it's all starting to come together. So, uh, cross on the west side is next. So that's all I have. Mr. Fink. <coughs> what, can you give us a little update on the chief police? Is it, the, how many applicants do we have? Or? Oh, police chief search. No, I can't give you an update at this point in time. The uh, resume review is set. Uh, I think our schedule identified that resume review to begin this week, at some point in time. And at this, I haven't done that uh, as of right now, and so I can't give you an update on number of applicants or anything like that. But uh, we, uh, when that gets underway, which it should soon. Uh, the next two stages would be to do a preliminary review of the applications, uh, identify folks that may uh, receive a uh, sort of preliminary uh, interview, which more than likely would be done over the phone for anybody that didn't live in Garden City. For folks that lived in Garden City, it might be done face-to-face -face, uh, and set to invite folks into Garden City between the between the holidays, I think, is what we targeted, wasn't it, Allie? Yes. Uh, for an assessment center sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, it's moving along. It's moving along. Okay. Um, I might mention the uh, banner auction was well attended Saturday night uh, for downtown Vision okay. and uh, I was surprised to turn out with the game and high school playing uh, Dodge City and there was a full house and I uh, hoped it was cold and rainy. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, and I don't know what they brought in, but uh, I think the highest banner went for twelve hundred dollars, and the lowest went for fifty. I think that's all. It was a good auction. Most important is what did ours go? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. The one we split some of Yes, the banner art auction, it was really, it was um, a nice event. It was fun. Um, and I'd like to remind everybody to please participate in the events for Veterans Day this Saturday. The people that have served for us have given so much and, and it's the right thing to do to, to honor them for what they've done for us and our country. And um, I also had the opportunity to visit with fourth graders at Jenny Barker, talk about what the city commission does and, and they have lots of questions and they had message that they'd like to send back to the commission. They love all the animals at the zoo, but they'd like to see more. <laughs> They would like to see more restaurants and um, more places for children's activities. So, 
they had a lot of good input. We discussed all these things, and it was very enjoyable. That's all I have. Well, there'll be nothing else. We'll adjourn. All right.